So it's a 60 years old uh, male patient. It's a fisherman by occupation from Maldives. He presented with uh, pain in his right shoulder and inability to lift weight since two years duration. He had a fall while he was uh, lifting or getting out down from the boat. He had a fall. And after that, he was having pain and not able to lift the shoulder and he has got a functional difficulty. This is the active uh, range of movements what he has got. So he's got a good internal rotation. And uh, as you see, he has got a good abduction, good elevation. And uh, you can see this uh, functional deficit is more of external rotation lag in zero degree. You can see that. So 90 degrees also, it's okay, but zero degree is the is main function, external loss, and also his job test is positive. It is able to lift the shoulder on the right side, but it is very painful and weak for him. So because he's a manual laborer, his problem is the painful elevation and also the external rotation. And you can see the x-ray. As you see, you can may say Hamada stage two. You can see the proximal migration, but no stabilization. And uh, that is the coronal uh, MRI. You can see that that is the supra and uh, infra tear with uh, retraction up to the glenoid level. His occupancy ratio is around 42.7 percent, and fatty infiltration is around grade two, not huge. So this is his presentation with the functional loss. It's a manual laborer. To initiate the uh, uh, discussion, my question is to do, how do you define? Because many cases when you see this kind of tear, sometimes you can go and do a repair also. So what are your criteria to decide that it is an irreparable cough? It itself is a big question. So to tell the patient, the counsel, the patient. So I request panel or somebody. So how do you decide that what are all your criteria to say that to the patient that is going to be an irreparable cough? Uh, panel? Yes, anyone sir. from the audience? Sir, I would start off with uh, uh, like how much of a retraction there. Like if it is a pate grade 3, definitely it is looking, you are looking at a augmentation addition. Up to, I think up to 2, pate 2, we'll be, we might be able to repair. And uh, very rarely we go out without a repair. And then um, when you saw uh, the fatty infiltration, so this is actually uh, 2 or 3, it, that is also, it is borderline. borderline. So these two look, these are two things. Suppose if it is a severe fatty infiltration, yes, it is. These are the two things. I feel uh, repairability is a criteria, and other, uh, more than the Hamada grades. So I feel that unless we can, rip, uh, unless it is a Hamada grade three, so uh, like glenohumeral arthritis is setting in, that means it's pretty bad. But otherwise, up to three Hamada, I think it is repairable. Or if it is at a salvage, we can have uh, Densha, Pradashish. I think same criteria, but for me the two, so of course there's clinical, radiological, for me in the radiological, so two years, the tear happening two years is a big, you know, big tech, red yeah. flag for me. Number two thing I'm looking for is how much is the tendon loss, so it's not just the fatty infiltration, when you're looking at the SAG views and you see that you've got an adequate size tendon, even if it's retracted, you can bring it back, but if you've got tendon loss, tendon itself is gone, then you're not going to be able to get it back uh, even with a medialized single row repair. So I think for me that is another red flag. Besides, of course, the third red flag being fatty uh, infiltration Great itself. Yes. Ashish wants to say So combination of age, duration is a big no-no. Absolutely. And uh, apart from this uh, thing there, I must have a T1 sag. Now the T1 sag is funny because if you notice most of these uh, early ones that come in at six months, you see a T1 sag where there's 20% uh, wasting to, and grade 2 fatty infusion. All that is happening under the AC joint. When it's happening under the AC joint, it's actually the tendon that's retracted. If you see it AC joint and if you see it even more proximally, that's bad news. So it's at two levels. Then it's a sustained uh, atrophy. At AC joint is not such a big problem as long as the base level, most medial most cut, is looking very healthy and fulsome, then that's the problem. Yeah. Having said that, whatever quality MRI you do, there are two things you will never know. Number one is the quality of tendon that you'll know only yes. once you go in. Absolutely. And number two, retractability. You can have a patty too and you go in and it is stiff and fibrotic. Yes. So you must always have a plan B, counsel to the patient in advance. Because that's the only metric that works. Sir. So Raman wants Raman to come in. 
I think the presence of the lag sign is a very, very bad sign in a, in a cuff tear. So, uh, if the lag sign is there, Hamada 2, uh, fatty degeneration bordering on between 2 to 3, uh, all the points are valid um, which have been elucidated. Uh, the retraction uh, is, will constitute a massive cuff tear, but retraction will not constitute the repairability or irreparability. I think and that elasticity of the cuff when you have done the adequate capsulotomies and removed the adhesions between the spine and the cuff and still you are not able to bring it back and see the cuff becomes a little bit, it loses the elasticity and that point can never be, you know, it's just a dynamic thing. So I think uh, you could say that this could, you could bring it back properly or you could still struggle and do some alternative procedure. So both options should be open in such a… Yeah, I think uh, Sundar, the age is in her part, um, 55, even though it's only 42 percent occupancy rate, uh, the uh, infiltration is a grade 2 type, uh, grade 2. So I think uh, we should be able to, if you, if you will be able to release it and if you can at least have the uh, partial repair with the anterior uh, cabling. Yeah, so the um, idea of a discussion so, is to, yeah. sh sh to show that, I mean, it's not a single factor can say that it's an irreparable exactly, cough. Exactly, exactly. Like what it, uh, these are later, it's a tendon loss or could be a Many things of the clean eye. I yeah. think most important is the history, chronic history. It's a two years duration. So that is a very, very important because when you see the same picture at six months, you can repair. It's a different one. In yeah. many cases, you say that you may not be able to, I may augment or something, but when it's a 8 out of 10 situation, you go and do a repair for that particular patient. So that situation is only a 2 out of 3, I mean 2 or 3 in out of 10. So I think this is a combination of factors very important, especially chronic nature. I think the more than grade 3 or fat infiltration or retraction, more than glenoid, the combination of the factors will decide whether it's going to be an irreparable cuff. So this is a 2 years uh, duration, that's what I wanted to say. So, how will you assess this patient? How do you plan for your repairable cuff? So, you take the combination of your what kind of uh, tendon stone by doing, uh, we can even the, uh, your uh, Collins classifications helps you. So, here you can see a complete supra and infra has gone. But the same situation, it is not alone. You cannot take a decision that, okay, by doing this, I am going to do this procedure. So, you have to do a combination of functional deficit with the radiological correlation. So, that's what makes the irreparable cuff uh, in the management, it makes a lot of difference. So here is the patient who has got a pain and weakness and he has got a full forward elevation but painful and weak and the abduction is full and full weak but internal rotation is normal. Of course, extensor rotation lag at zero degree. So, so you have to combine both the super, last case also supra infra tear. I think Dinsha is also going to show showing the supra and infra tear, but the functional deficit is totally different for this patient. He's got an elevation is possible, but uh, painful, but more problem is he's got a complete extensor rotation log. And also I put an arthroscopic view. Of course, many of us decide only after going arthroscopically. We cannot decide preoperatively that I'm going to do an ACR alone or... Uh, uh, so this is the quality of the tendon, which uh, Dinsha also told about this which you can see that compared to the x-ray, it was a little more slightly started, arthritic changes started taking because he's only 55 years old, but subscap was intact, biceps is not there. That is the quality of the tendon. You can see that is the remaining infraspinatus. Of course, there is no supra, you cannot bring it at all. That is the infraspinatus, uh, what we have. Next. So we can have next slide. Yeah. Okay, so I move on to the next slide. So. I think this is the most important here is the, uh, you have to, uh, I think the Kenny's uh, definitions are very, very helpful to know what kind of deficit this patient has got. I think whether uh, this patient, main issue is that isolated lot of external rotation, his elevation is full, is only a little weak compared to the uh, uh, supraspinatus is a bit weak, but it's not complete loss, he's got a full movements and he's lost the complete power of the external rotation. So he's moving loss is the isolated loss of external rotation. So here is a 60 years old patient with the supra and infra tear, intact subscap, isolated loss of external rotation, functional loss, fat infiltration of grade 2 to 3, Hamada stage 2. Here I opted for tendon transfer because his loss is only a more of external rotation. This elevation is possible but it weak. We know that tendon transfer can give a good external rotation. At the same time, it can help in uh, elevation also. If there is no pseudo paralysis, you have a good result. Again, the argument can you can do what kind of tendon transfer you can do, whether lateral transfer or a lower trapezius transfer. So, how many of you do a 
Let us must say how many of you will do a lawyer to PCS. Or still you are going with only a seer. Okay. I'll go ahead with the cases, then maybe we can discuss. So, I went with the uh, lawyer trapezius tendon transfer. Why? Because it has got a good synergetic function, restore the anterior and posterior force couple, directly improves the external rotation and also helps in elevation and also helps to dynamically center the humeral head. So, ideal indications for LTT is whenever there is an external rotation lag is positive with the active elevation of preferably more than 60, that not, not a pseudo paralysis. Of course, there are, uh, I mean, Basam had published with even 40 to 50 percent of improvement in pseudo paralysis with the tendon transfer. And involvement of two or more tendons and the retracted PET stage 3 are these all the types of the callings or grade 3 plus fatty infiltrations, more of for, of course, the revision cuff repairs. So, this is what we did. Uh, we, did. we can see that completely its uh, humeral head is wide of any cuff at all. But even though the, the tendon quality is uh, uh, a bit bad, we could uh, repair partial infraspinatus as you asked, it's any, always it's a combination of the uh, procedure. You can see that tendon position is not very good, but we could get the uh, lower uh, infraspinatus to bring back to the uh, position and attach it. Then you uh, take the lower trapezius tendon transfer, this slightly bigger incision here, but you can see that the complete uh, take away the graft and this uh, tendochilus allograft was prepared. Of course, we had used uh, now hamstring and peroneus also. And you take through the anterior portal, take the graft inside. You can see that is the movement of the your tendochilus allograft going inside. And uh, that fixed with uh, not less anchor in the anterior most portion of your humeral head as far as possible to bring it take to the take to the anterior most part of your humeral head and once you fix that uh, uh, your anterior portion of your graft then the threads which are available after repairing that infraspinatus was, ta was taken over the your tendon allograft and it is used as a lateral row so that the whole graft has been pushed to the footprint of the uh, tuberosity and you put it in the lateral side. So that is how I put the two lateral anchors by taking the threads over the tendon graft. Then bringing the graft and attaching to your lawyer trapezius. And that is the uh, final uh, position of your partially repaired infraspinatus and the, the allograft, as you can see that almost it's covered the 80 percent of the uh, footprint and also it's covered the good uh, joint. You can see that completely it's covered here. So that is the external rotation which is, he has got of course, he has got a full elevation also, I didn't present the other videos. This is the four months video which, uh, which you have sent me uh, from the Maldives. I don't have the MRI, it's already eight months, he has gone back to his work, but I don't have this video or the MRI. MRI will take after one year. We have done a, so far about seven cases, but uh, not all the cases tend to achilles, but we had used um, hamstring and peroneus ones. So, I think that was now very nice. I think we have any questions from the panelists? <laughs> Dr. Pratik, any question? So, you use the uh, trape lower trapezius and you use the yellow graft. Yes, sir. So, any difference you find in uh, hamstring, uh, the cases you said you did some with hamstring, any difference with hamstring oblique al allograft? Do you feel any difference no, between our, my, our numbers are very less. Of, co of, of course, we had used, uh, uh, I think, uh, four cases of uh, hamstring graft and two cases of peronia so far. But I couldn't find any difference because I, I, it's only all uh, done in within the last one and a half years. So I don't have a long-term result to say. But uh, functionally, uh, these, even the patient who had undergone hamstring graft also had, a good, had had a good external rotation, good power. The technique you use for hamstring and uh, tendon at least is same or a different technique? Same. Or you would deal in a tunnel transverse uh, tunnel? I use the same technique, screws same technique. technique. I don't use the end of, you can use the button also, but I don't use the tunneling and button technique. I use the same same technique. Same technique. Try to repair as far as possible infraspinatus. The same threads, I use it for a lateral anchor to keeping the infraspinatus over the footprint, uh, sorry, the graft over the footprint and take it and uh, fix it up. So it sits nicely. So, so it was very nice. I think anyone 